that one lost, I think. They're doing pretty good. To Air Force, isn't it? Yeah. So, welcome to this morning's forum. We're doing something a little different this morning. And we're presenting where the youth went on a mission trip this summer. This mission trip happened for two reasons. One, the youth really want to go. And second, out of your generous and extremely, extremely incredible support. Uh, this parish, just to let you guys know, through generous donations and the Missionary Society, basically covered all expenses that was needed for this mission trip. Um, so, if you get a chance, give yourself a pat on the back, because without you, it would not have happened. But, I think what's really, really important on this is that this was a spiritual journey of faith, as well as a mission trip. And throughout our entire trip, whoops, we led ourselves through this. And I would just like to now say this together, because we're going to be going on the same journey they did in a very brief amount of time. Lord be with you. Lord, make us your instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is madness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to be consoled, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. So what we did is we left here with about 15 or 16 other youth from the Diocese of Virginia, and we traveled to Philadelphia. And we stayed at a place called the Fiscal Mission Center. This has been operating since around 1950, 1955. It took a pause or a hiatus, and then it came back into really fruition sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, it is a thriving community, and their entire world revolves around exposing people to what mission is. Um, what you're seeing at the top there, this church, St. Phil, or excuse me, St. Luke's, was at one time one of the very few Anglican monasteries and convents on the East Coast. In the East Coast. It is no longer that. Uh, they have pretty much given up their convents. There are still some monks there that practice. But for the most part, this is now all mission. And on the left are the female dorms, and on the right are the male dorms. In the middle is the street of Germantown, uh, right outside of our, if you went out of the mission center turned right, that's what you would see. I would say the dorms were sparse at best. Uh, the beds were well constructed, the mattresses were like laying on uh, rice. <laughs> um, it was down to the basement, you know, very bare, this very, very bare essentials, uh, very basic living, which really helped out of the experience. Now, one of the things I think is a misperception is that a lot of times we hear a mission trip, and the first thing that pops into mind is what? Building, building houses. Overseas. Overseas, exactly. And I think there is a lot of truth in that, but there's also a lot of oversight, or a lot of overlooking the fact that so much in this country can use benefit, or can benefit from mission. And it's against that backdrop that we were in Philadelphia. I'm going to give you just a minute to read through this, but I want to highlight a few things. For the most part, what we worked with, especially in Germantown, was the poverty. Um, and this is very, very deep in poverty. What's not on here is the average rental for a home in, this, in the area of Germantown, where we mostly work, but also around Philadelphia. The average rent per month is around $1,200. <coughs> So for a family of four that takes in twelve thousand a year, they don't have any ability to do anything else other than which is why they have one of the highest homeless rates currently in the US. Um, they have about 90% homeless of their of this franchise. Um, I mean, annual unemployment rate is seven point eight. The national I think is around six or something. So Philadelphia is in pretty horrific shape. And that's not to say that 
it's a bad city. It's not saying that they're bad people and how, how good we are for going into the city and taking care of them. But it is a contrast against what we have here. Um, I think Alexandria has it pretty good. We have some, some bad areas. But the whole philosophy behind mission is taking you outside of your comfort zone and inter introducing you into environments that force you to think and react in ways that you normally would. And in forcing and reacting in those abnormal ways to you, you open yourself up to a spiritual journey. And we're going to talk a little more about this later, but I want to hand the presentation now over to those who really went on the mission trip. Um, they are, for this there we are, they're Lily Clausen. Reading, playing games, uh, just talking with them. 
Uh, what made this very uh, special to a lot of people was how <coughs> unquestionably accepting and, and excited they were towards the volunteers just because you were there. Like as soon as, as soon as you got there, they just wanted to hold your hand and have somebody listen to them. And um, I can't tell you, I, I went twice there while I was in Philadelphia, and I can't tell you how good it felt to see a child who you had just met two days before for a few hours to come up to you and ask you where you were yesterday and exclaiming, like, you came back. Um, it was a very, very eye-opening experience for a lot of people, um, for everybody who went there, and I think we all hope that it was just as uh, rewarding for the kids. We also did a lot of food distribution while we were in Philadelphia, uh, especially with one company in particular called Philabundance, which is this amazing company that provides free food to agencies in Philadelphia um, that are able to give to 90,000 people per week, which is crazy. It's, it's even crazier to think that there are that many people and more in Philadelphia who rely on this company and these services to meet their basic needs. And while we were there, we got a lot done. We, the days that we were there, we packaged almost 9,000 pounds of frozen meat and tons and tons and tons of canned and dried goods. And it was actually a really uh, fun experience for everybody who went. Uh, I got to go twice, and both times um, we all really got into the conveyor belts and <laughs> <laughs> and we had a really, a really good time. We got a little competitive. Uh, even better than that was knowing that the very box that you were, that you were packing, and that you were taping, and that you were moving, was actually going to a family who would otherwise go hungry. And um, that's what made that a very, really um, changing experience for us. And these are some more pictures of us at Phil Abundance. Uh, that's me on the conveyor belt on the left. <laughs> and it was the cold room, so we were wearing covers. And then Phoebe and Corey and Addie all on the conveyor belt. And that's a group that went one day. And with that, I will hand it over to Corey and During community time, we got to talk about what we 
where we had been working that day and what we We also talked about what we'd like to found things that we have in common. We experienced the city in a fun way. Um, we ate with the locals, they walked around with the other locals walked in and had unique times. During our night off, we were forced to have a mandatory
as much about it, but in Philadelphia, it's everywhere. Um, for me, I know that this uh, mission trip to Philadelphia was one that I know I'll never forget. Um, I had never been on a mission trip before, and I didn't really know what to expect. To be honest, I was a little skeptical before we started. I wasn't sure. Uh, I, you know, I wasn't sure really why I was doing this or um, how much I would enjoy it, but um, I was I was proven wrong. It was um, an experience that really it's it's hard to hard to put into words just because there's so many so many feelings and so many um, like so many memories and uh, like life changing experiences that are associated with it and. Um, it's really opened my eyes to what a mission trip can be about and how it's more than just an obligatory, like something to make you feel good about yourself morally. <laughs> it's, um, and it's an experience that I definitely uh, has made me want to replicate and uh, do more, go different places, go to Philadelphia again even. Um, and so uh, that's, that's my um, losing reflection on this trip. <laughs>
people. So it's kind of cool, and it was really awesome that you get to meet people that you're just going to be friends with for a while, and we tend to go back, or like a lot of churches do. I think that is what the, the thing that jumped out at me the most. Um, I think what jumped out to me the most, I was probably like how much I'm after actually affecting this community by the work I was doing. Because, you know, one tiny community service trip might not seem like too much, but after this whole, after seeing all the statistics of what we were doing and how it was helping people, you're like, I'm part of something a lot bigger. Like, I'm actually feeding people, I'm helping them, like, um, stay like, off the streets, because there are, like, many people about to go homeless there. So it felt really good. Uh, one thing that was really surprising to me was that how many resources were available in Philadelphia just to help the community. And with a place that has as many troubles as that city, you would think that there is maybe a lack of response, like, and, like not, not that it's kind of apathetic, but there's really just, there's so many organizations, so many places that we visited that there were all there to help people just um, just for that reason, just for volunteers. And I probably went to like eight um, sites while I was there. I was going to two almost every day. Um, and it was really just amazing to see how many, how many resources were available to the people there and how you can see how it's constantly growing and changing and um, the city's constantly improving that way. I didn't expect that. One thing that most surprised me, and I don't remember if Dawn touched up on it, but was um, actually a very scary statistic. One in every three Philadelphians go to bed. One in every three. Yeah, the uh, the ninety thousand people that are receiving food are only about a third of what really needs food in that city. Bill of is just one agency, it's the largest, but it's not everyone's really still being reached. There's still a lot of people hungry in that city. Um, and if I can change real quick, the one thing I think that struck out of me was for some of y'all know the whole, but this is my twenty fifth mission trip. And every time I do a mission trip, there's a different response from those youth. And this one really struck me the most because for the very first time, I saw almost up front them realizing that they're not there to save the community, they're there to help. Meaning, sometimes you get the impression that they're there just because, oh, I get to make somebody feel good, and that's, that's important, and look how good I'm doing for making somebody else feel good. This really was a very sincere, and as you've seen this morning, very heartfelt, and we get to help. And what a great experience. And so for me, that was my, I was kind of surprised by that. Because I, I noticed that on Monday morning when we arrived on Sunday, how fast that was. Well, you had mentioned, and maybe I just missed it, John, when I came in. You say you were part of a group that came up from Alexandria, 30 some? There were, uh, it was 15 from the Diocese of Virginia, and then we met up with, I did not realize this until the time we arrived, that we partnered with a church in Gatesburg, Maryland called Church of the Ascension. Uh, and they bring, they're a powerhouse of youth group. They have about 100 kids, and they cut them off every year at 18, and they have turned kids away. So they have 18 meet up with us every year. And so this is a big one now for, is it seventh year? There's something crazy. Yeah, this is the seventh year they've done it. Um, and so that was the other half of 36. But they're all within, you know, we've done this in the DC area. Uh, and, but, and, Given that this group came from here to this area yep. up to Philadelphia, were there also other groups coming from other parts of the country? Just, uh, just Maryland. Our, during our week, it was just Maryland and just uh, the Diocese of Virginia. There were other weeks where different places from all over the country. I was in one of the like um, areas where they were, where the uh, so what do you call it? like counselors? Yeah. Like plan, and there are people coming from like Washington State. Yeah. So there are people from all over. There was a group coming in after. I'm sorry, I'll get to you later. Oh, yeah. There was a group coming in an address that was coming from town. So EMC and then some world world track. Yes. Yeah, I just wondered if each of you could take point for me if you think the biggest difference is in the life experiences you have had compared to the kids that you met 
that the inner city could be Philadelphia. And also, in terms of opportunities that they will have and the opportunities that you have, in terms of, for example, going to college or, right. you know. So, I definitely know something about these kids are definitely probably growing up with a lot less stuff than I grew up with. I mean, I'm the youngest of um, three, so I definitely get a lot of hanging down stuff. And so I do have a lot of my own stuff, but these kids probably can't have that much stuff with them, um, the, considering how many of them. We didn't really touch on these kids' life stories as much, just because we didn't want to like, make them cry or something. It was like, really like, you don't want to touch like a really like touchy um, subject, unless they kind of brought it up to you. But we can kind of tell based on maybe like the neighborhoods we pass through that they probably didn't have like this as good maybe like as good as life was, but they probably still had a good life in general. It was kind of shocking to see. Actually, one of the friends I made on the trip, often he was talking about this, how when you go to these kids um, camps, what I was saying, the kids' faces just light up. And you don't know where they come from. You don't know what their home life is. But no matter that, they are optimistic. And that's really what you know kids do. And it was, it, what I was saying, it is like we don't know what their life story is or how they do. But coming from a place like Philly, it's hard to, it's not the best place for, I don't know what it yeah, is. It's like, like, it's like, no, but they still continue to be optimistic. Right. If I can underscore what they're saying. So if this is city camps, this is a basement of a church called St. Mary's. This playground is the one of three playgrounds they go to. The kids at St. Mary's have to walk uh, about six blocks to get to this park. To give an insight into the difference between maybe what uh, you guys grew up with, with what they're growing up with, um, college is pretty much not an option for most of these children. Uh, there's 60,000 of them. Uh, the hardest thing, though, is the environment they're growing up in, one that we don't grow up in here. And I did not take a picture of it, but if you look, where these kids are sitting around a tree, I'm taking it from a picnic table. On that picnic table are burn marks in the shape of spoons. So where kids are playing, people are doing heroin. So that's not something that most of our kids are growing up with around here. And it's pervasive, it's open, it's very conspicuous, and the kids know it. But yet, as Phoebe had mentioned, and Addie said, the minute you walk into one of the city camps, they just get excited because someone's paying attention to them. So their opportunities are is that as long as people keep reaching out to them, they may not go into college, but hopefully they will get away from a life that allows, that gives permission to burn heroin in the middle of the children's park. So that's that's where it hopefully changes. Really touched on this. Do you get a sense of progress in, or a sort of a sense of status of some of the constant social services need to be ramped up? But yes and no. I mean, it's hard to know in one week. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a long term thing that needs to happen, and it's not something that we can like have a have a benchmark goal of seeing in just six days. But it's knowing that you've done one little thing that can hopefully um, lead to progress in, in the future. And even if you can't see the results immediately. Um, and like in the beginning of the trip, we talked about this like, Mark's mission and one of them was transformation. And I said, I like that because I'm able to see it, like the, the results of what I'm doing. Like, I like being able to do that. And, and sometimes it's hard. And in, in a setting like this, like where you can't really exactly see the effects that you're having, but just knowing that they're there and that they exist and that it will help in the future is is, um, is just as rewarding. For um, next summer, do any of you have a goal about how many more people you want to bring to Philadelphia? Will you go back to Philadelphia next summer? Do you have a plan? We can take it. You take 50? Awesome. So, wow. You have a little recruiting to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hope that more kids will come because it is such a great experience. But you know, people plan summer really, really 
dip our head and we have to go to camp so you have to go to you know summer gym or you need to go to summer school or take driving lessons whatever you know, summer is sometimes hard to plan to but I really hope that more people can enjoy this experience because it was such an amazing thing to do that I really hope more kids can come. I also think um, we and John probably we think that we were almost the, kind of the test yeah. subjects like no one really knew what we were getting ourselves into because we well we had never done this trip before and this was our um, like the first mission trip for our youth in a while. Like I think maybe one of the last ones they did was when my sister was in the youth group and like she's 20 now, so um it's been a while. So I think most kids are maybe like, oh I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but because of us, hopefully it will help. Also a lot of times people I know, at least my experience when I talk to people like, oh, are you going to the youth group? I mean, you're going to the youth admission? They'll be like, oh, well, it's like, we're not out of the country, so maybe like, I'll go next year if we go out. But I went, I was like, I mean, I signed up for this mission, I thought like, like, darn, we're not going, you know, somewhere really cool. But no matter where you are, you can really like impact people. So I really hope that this presentation and us having going somewhere only three hours away can really impact more people to come to places like Philadelphia and help even though they're not, you know, all the way to the You guys got exposed to some, a lot, of <laughs> really, really uh, in crucial, crucial issues, you know, in a very, very short time. And I think it, it really sort of stuck with you. I'm just kind of curious, once you got back into the regular mom drum routine <laughs> at school, have, have you sort of shared your experiences with any of your friends and what, what has their reaction been? Oh, I definitely shared um, the teacher memorial story with a lot of my friends because I think out of our group, I think it affected me the most. And, oh. <laughs> um, I mean, I was crying for a while, just saying. Um, but I think when I told them, they seemed even more shocked than when I was because I was saying like on a, on each of these t-shirts there's a name, an age, and a date, and that's their name, their age, and the date that they got from a legal mm -hmm. So I think it was very hard because I mean it does it doesn't happen that much around the Rio. Like we live in a pretty good community for growing up, but over there. You know, you never know. Like there are probably some kids who may even hear like gunshots at night, and they're just like, "Oh, well, it's pretty normal." Yeah. Now, if we heard that, we'd probably be like, "Go to the basement, lock down, like, let's um, hide." Like, but it almost seemed like for some of these kids that it would happen kind of regularly. So. I feel that my experience personally with this was sort of the opposite to Addie's. I feel like now that I'm back, it's kind of hard to bring up conversations like this. And it's hard to say that too because I was there for so long and so happy that I want to spread and tell people about this. But usually people don't want to talk about this. This is not something that's an everyday conversation. It's not something that you walk up to a buddy in school and you know talk about this. So it's really hard to spread on a message of something that you've learned from an experience like this because a lot of times people don't want to hear it or don't want to talk about it because it's so hard to hear. So that's the person my so, yeah, I agree with Phoebe. I think it's, it's really difficult to explain to someone, especially when it's your friends, you're not used to talking about some heavy topics with because it's you know it's difficult to acknowledge something that's not right in front of your face. And like Evie said earlier, it's just something on the news, like it's not really affecting me. But when we were there, we experienced it firsthand and it stuck with us. But for for, you know, for our friends, for our peers, that's not the case. And so it is it is very hard to to like help them see that even if you're even if you're giving them detailed accounts of what you did, what you saw, and like how you felt, it's still it's still challenging. Wow, so you really had an experience that is is has deeply affected you, but it's, it's hard for your peers to relate really to. And that's that's got to be a that, that's got to be an unusual tension for you to, to have. You, you kind of now gone one level beyond, <laughs> and and so so kudos to you. But it, it must be an unusual 
way out to, to have to relate to people because they haven't really kind of gotten where you now are. It's difficult to, like, I've noticed that I talk to my mom about this a lot, and I talk to my dad about it, and maybe my sister, but um, it's more difficult to talk to kids about this, so I do tend to speak to adults more because it's not that they care more. It's just that they understand where I'm coming from, and they like, experience something like this, or that they've been old enough to understand fully what it really means. So when you're put into a situation like we were put in, it like like a light turned on. You can see really what was in front of you the whole time that you didn't notice before. That's interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I was just gonna. Yeah, I think Phoebe's exactly right. It's very difficult to talk to people about experiences that are out of their comfort zone. People get very squirmy. And they do. They get very squirmy. And I mean, I wouldn't say so much of my own experiences, but I've had that happen. Anyway, what, um, the only thing I was going to um, think about as we just maybe is that if you, you know, if you have an opportunity to talk to your classes or some kind of forum in your school, that you use, you take that opportunity to talk about this because, um, you know, it's, I think it's very healthy for other kids.